Welcome to All This Math. This is Professor Parker, and we're dividing fractions, but we're not going to do the most popular form of dividing fractions. We're going to use a different method that I actually didn't learn myself, you know, not that long ago. I learned this not that long ago, where we take the common denominators. We don't have to find common denominators to divide fractions, but we can, right? So let me show you what we do. So think about when you're adding or subtracting fractions, because we must have common denominators or the same denominators in order to add or subtract fractions. We can do the same thing when we're dividing fractions. So what would, the com what would the least common denominator be of 3 and 4? We would say 12, right? Because 12 is the smallest number that both 3 and 4 can multiply into evenly. So we basically are creating equivalent fractions that have a denominator of 12, right? So we say, okay, I got 2 thirds right here. Now, what fraction is equivalent to 2 thirds that has a denominator of 12? The way I can figure that out is I can say, well, if I did 3 times 4 to get 12, as below, so it is above, I do 2 times 4 to get 8. So 2 thirds is equivalent to 8 twelfths. Now the same thing with 1 fourth. If 4 turns into a 12, I would do 4 times 3 to get 4 to turn into 12. So if I'm doing 4 times 3 on the bottom, I need to do 1 times 3 on top. So that gives me 3. Now, I because I have common denominators, right, I can essentially divide horizontally the same way we do when we multiply fractions. So if I'm doing 8 divided by 3, that would be 8 thirds in my numerator, and 12 divided by 12 is just 1. And what happens whenever you divide something by 1? The result is that number. So 8 thirds divided by 1 is just 8 thirds. And we see this is an improper fraction because our numerator is bigger than our denominator. So we can convert this to a mixed number if we want and say, okay, how many 3s can fit into 8? Two of them. So that's our whole number part, right? And then because 2 times 3 gives us 6, the difference between 8 and 6 is 2. So 2 is our numerator, and we keep that 3 for our denominator. So just notice what happens. So basically, if you have common denominators, your denominator is always going to end up being 1. So that's why your answer is going to be whatever's left in the numerator. And sometimes, you know, you'll get a whole number too. And that's today's lesson.